For over 70 years, Formula One has been a premier global sport, with opulent, multi-day races held in countries across the world. F1's events are wildly popular. In 2017, the sport had a cumulative TV audience of 1.4 billion viewers, not to mention the 4 million spectators that attended its racing events throughout the year. But even as Formula One commands hundreds of millions of viewers, Americans, for the most part, just don't seem to care. Being a Formula One fan in America is uh, at times a lonely proposition. Formula One and the United States have had a rocky relationship for as long as the sport's been around. Not for the first time, and perhaps not for the last, F1 is desperately trying to change that. Since its founding, Formula One has been an international organization. The first world championship was held in 1950 at Silverstone in the United Kingdom. The winning driver, Italian racer Giuseppe Farina, drove a supercharged Alfa Romeo in front of 120,000 cheering spectators, including England's reigning monarch, King George VI. It was a peculiar form of nationalism where there was the French Grand Prix, the Spanish, the British, the German, and it was largely a continental Europe uh, phenomenon. Other races that year were held in Monaco, Indianapolis, Switzerland, Belgium, France, and Italy. Of the seven, only Indianapolis was easy for American fans to attend. And that barrier to entry, the high concentration of European races, is one reason the sport never caught on in the U.S. But even after Formula One races began being broadcast on TV, Americans still didn't tune in. For one, the U.S. had its own motorsports to watch, IndyCar and NASCAR, which has been around since the 1940s. On top of that, even if you wanted to watch the races on TV, you'd have to wake up extremely early to catch them. We have a difficult time uh, following a lot of the European uh, races live because they go on at about 5 in the morning. So it's a difficult proposition to get a group together at usually a sports bar uh, to watch a, a live start. There were also very few American drivers to cheer for. The last American to win a race was Mario Andretti, and that was at the Dutch Grand Prix in 1978. The sport, uh, under prior stewardship, sort of began to move the sport wherever the money to the sport was the highest. And that left Formula One in places like Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, Singapore, Shanghai, none of which is, is bad for the sport except that in the process of doing that, they neglected to maintain a footprint here in the United States. The low point in the Formula One U.S. relationship came at the U.S. Grand Prix in 2005. At the very last minute, 14 cars were forced to withdraw due to safety concerns. Only six cars ended up racing. It was a major PR disaster for F1 in the U.S. Most Americans in the stands left feeling disappointed and cheated of their money. The race they'd come to see didn't deliver. It was a low point, for sure, in American Formula One history. But the future of Formula One in America may be getting brighter. For one, NASCAR has had an undeniably rough few years. It's lost TV viewers and struggled to fill stadiums. Additionally, Formula One has had a significant change in leadership. It was acquired by Liberty Media, an American company, in early 2017 for $8 billion. F1's new CEO, Chase Carey, has high hopes for the sport in America, telling CNBC at the time of the acquisition that he wanted to make the races feel more like Super Bowl events. Make these events everything they can be, reaches out across digital media that we're not connecting to today, build an marketing organization that connects to fans, uh, enables fans to connect to the sport. One year later, an expansion in America is already happening. A new Miami Street Circuit Grand Prix will be added to the calendar in 2019. The race would be in addition to the U.S. Grand Prix. So why does Formula One care so much about getting Americans on board? Well, there's a lot of money to be gained from ticket sales, advertisers, and sponsors. U.S. consumers shelled out $56 billion to attend sporting events in 2016. You have 325 million people. Uh, in the United States, uh, which is just in sheer numbers, is an audience you shouldn't leave behind. And Formula One could use the boost. A 
According to Forbes and Reuters, F1's $8 billion sale actually reflected lost value for the racing series. In 2012, the series was priced at $9.1 billion, meaning over 10% of its value eroded between then and the $8 billion purchase four years later. It's not a sure thing that Formula One will catch on. U.S. Grand Prix attendance fell in 2017 by 4.4% from the year prior, and there are no American drivers racing in Formula One this year. But if there's ever a time for Formula One to capture America's hearts, it's now. With NASCAR struggling and new American F1 leadership, it's possible the pastime will make a permanent mark on U.S. soil. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.